I wish I could say the last night that I ever touched heroin was the night of my overdose, but it wasn't. Demi Lovato reveals she relapsed on heroin after the 2018 overdose that nearly took her life. I thought, how did I pick up the same drugs that put me in the hospital? I was like mortified at my decisions. She was even surprised at just how much she ended up wanting to share, um, which is all about the safe space and the ability, you know, to ultimately get her story out there. Episode three of the I Love Me Singers four-part docu-series, Dancing with the Devil, dropped Tuesday on YouTube. And the 28-year-old entertainer opens up about using drugs again after her 2018 overdose. I had just done a week-long um, intensive trauma retreat. The night that I came back from that retreat, I called him. I wanted to rewrite his choice of violating me. I wanted it now to be my choice. And he also had something that I wanted, which were drugs. And I, yeah, I ended up getting high. The him Demi is referring to is her drug dealer, who in an earlier episode, Demi alleged sexually assaulted her the night of her overdose. When they found me, I was naked. I was blue. I was literally left for dead after he took advantage of me. And Demi says she called him in an attempt to try to rewrite history. I called him back and I said, no, I'm gonna f you. And it didn't fix anything. It didn't take anything away. It just made me feel worse. But that for some reason was my way of taking the power back. All it did was bring me back to my knees of begging to God for help. Demi's case manager, Charles Cook, says she called him for help. How do we help you create a life where to have a sense of autonomy uh, does not mean putting yourself in these harmful situations? That being able to, you know, abuse your abuser is not where the healing is going to come from. When E.T. caught up with the documentary's director, Michael D. Ratner, he said that while he has worried about Demi, he also knows she is doing the work to heal. So growing close with her, spending all this time, and seeing how much she was still on a journey while you were filming, did you worry about her? Yes. You know, I mean, you're, you're, when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're learning and um, understanding if you're really going to pay attention and listen, uh, when entering a world filled with trauma and addiction and um, a storied history, uh, you'd be foolish not to worry in some capacity. I also need to be respectful of boundaries and know um, that you know I'm there to document the story. I've been uh, producing, directing tons of different work. Sometimes it's lighter and a comedy and I can go eat dinner that night and I go to set the next day and I'm ready to, this, it's very hard to shut your brain off. Um, it's, it really sticks with you. So yeah, there was some times where just heavy subject matter would stick with you and you would think about it and it'd keep you up. And, you know, of course you, you worry a bit. Um, but I really believe that, uh, today Demi is, is working on herself so much and really has gotten to the root of a lot of those things that she's in the best place she's been. Um, but again, she is, she's not fixed. We always talked about how this doc, it's very hard to wrap up a documentary and say, that's the end on a 28 year old. She's 28 years old. So this is uh, the end of a chapter and uh, I'm really proud of where she is and, and the work she's doing.